Okay, another quick video to discuss the second quiz. Um, first off, with regard to your first quiz, um, here is the thing. Uh, still working away on them. You will have them uh, graded on Saturday at the very latest. Uh, my apologies. Uh, there are just a lot of them, and I couldn't work my way through all of them in an effective amount of time. Now, uh, what I want to do today is go over uh, your second quiz here, uh, which I've posted to Moodle today. Uh, same sort of boilerplate as the last one. It's due Sunday, October 11th by 5 p.m. Um, you know from the first one, it disappears quite quickly if uh, you don't get it, um, it sort of is submitted on time. Um, it, sorry, I'm using my classroom uh, on campus to record this video, so there are people coming and going. It's going to be fine, right? Um, may actually benefit them because they have this quiz as well. Um, so, uh, same boiler point played as the last time, um, taken from the course syllabus about section quizzes. Um, these are just quick sort of reading comprehension and um, sort of assessment quizzes to make sure you're paying attention. Uh, the question should be straightforward, but I'll go over them just to make sure you know what I'm asking for and that sort of thing. Um, missed assignment policy, it's straight from the syllabus. Um, same thing as usual. Uh, this pertains to all of the assignments. If you miss an assignment or are going to miss an assignment, you've got to contact me. Um, you've noticed that because these quizzes just disappear right at the moment that they're due. Um, you don't have access to them, so uh, you have to email me. Uh, that's just the way it is. It requires a conversation for a late submission. Um, assignment submission, um, again, it's your responsibility to make sure your assignment submitted and submitted properly and on time, so um, I can't go chasing after you. Um, there are just too many of you. There's just not enough hours in the day, especially with twin girls. Anyhow, um, so short answer questions, one to three sentences uh, for each point um, for each of these. Uh, and you're responsible for everything pertaining to, I say, Socrates on the quiz. That's a typo. I'll fix it. Um, I mean, Plato. Right? Um, so anyhow, um, again, I use the same boilerplate as the last quiz. So um, it's going to be the same. Um, so in-class material for my in-class students, uh, that amounts to video material for you. Um, all of the supplementary videos, everything from the discussion boards. This is all fair game. So, like I say, seven questions. First question, in the Phaedrus, Plato, via, uh, via his character Phaedrus, begins by recounting the inductive argument made by Lysias that presents us with the conclusion that non-love is to be preferred to love. That's a little dancey, I know. Plato is actually the author, so um, he uses Phaedrus to present that argument, but he points out that this is not Phaedrus's argument. It's all literary techniques here. Uh, he attributes it to Lysias. This is that first argument, the inductive argument that was basically a list of things wrong with love, and it's, I'm giving you too much. Anyhow, it's in the video material. Um, it's right on the board behind me where I actually sketch out the general form of this argument. So the first thing I ask you um, pertains to the video. Um, sketch the general form of this argument, just what was on the board behind me, um, as presented in the video for online students in class for on campus. That's part A. Notice there are two points for these. Part B has to do with defining an inductive argument. So what is an inductive argument? Right, so I'm just making sure you know what the kind of argument is and how to sketch Lysias' version of that kind of argument arguing to the conclusion that non-love is to be preferred to love. Should be straightforward. Um, I, the second speech, um, which is actually called Socrates' first speech, I know it's confusing, but whatever. In Socrates' first speech from the Phaedrus, uh, the character so Socrates strengthens the inductive argument made by Lysias, as recounted by Phaedrus, by turning it into a deductive argument. A. Sketch the general form of this argument as presented in the video for online students and in class for on-campus students. That's part A. That's worth the point. Second part is what is a deductive argument? Define it. Just define it. All right. So two points total for those who are already four points in. All right. That's almost halfway through. 
Um, number three, uh, this is so straightforward it's not even funny, uh, present the definition of love offered by Socrates in his first speech. If you're looking for a page reference, that's page 18. Like, just quote it. That's all I'm, like, I'm half making sure you bought the textbook, right? It should be that straightforward. Right? So, anyhow, um, that's, that's um, question three. Uh, question four. Um, <clears throat> briefly discuss the constitution of the soul, that is, what the soul is like, offered by Plato um, at the start of Socrates' second speech. That's the third speech we took a look at, the one where he's trying to establish love as a fourth kind of beneficial madness. Um, he goes on and on about to say what the soul is would um, take a really, really long time and be all together the, the, the work for God. Uh, but we, we, so we can't do that. But what we can do is say what the soul is like, and then he uses a metaphor. Um, so briefly discuss the metaphor. Like, what's what's the soul made up of? Right. Bada bing, bada boom. So that's one point for question number four. Uh, question number five. I'm sort of remembering that I should have weighted these differently so that um, <laughs> so that these questions are are worth more because five and six are actually the most important to understanding what the heck's going on with Plato. But nonetheless, um, so it is. This is just the way it is now. Um, five and six are just worth one point. Question five, briefly discuss Plato's theory of the forms. Tell me what the forms, like what's, what's he talking about? I also call these ideas. He um, uses uh, like justice as it really is, wisdom as it really is, beauty as it really is in order to describe this sort of thing. And remember, this is one of the beneficial elements of love is that it helps us get closer to the perfect truth of the forms. So anyhow, one point, just, just tell me what the heck the forms are. Should be straightforward. Um, it's, I also gave you that video, um, Plato's Theory of the Forms and Brackets Beginner kind of thing that might be useful where he's talking about appleness, right? Um, I believe I used the example of my cat in order to describe it, the theory of the forms, the kind of knowledge that Plato is claiming knowledge is of, right? Um, so anyhow, that's question five. Uh, in question six, uh, it reads, briefly discuss Plato's theory of recollection. Remember, this is Plato's epistemology. This is how we come to know anything, right? So um, that should be straightforward. Just go right for it. Tell me what he's talking about. Uh, then uh, question seven, the final one, and this is to me an interesting question. All right, um, it sort of kind of relates to your discussion forum. Your discussion forum, uh, you know, it deals with one of the benefits. Actually, I've got a review going on for my class. Uh, it brings harmony to the soul. Um, that's the one that your discussion uh, forum asks you to engage with. Um, the second benefit is that through recollection and the special character of beauty, it brings us closer to the perfect truth of the forms. So, um, d briefly discuss how platonic love brings us closer to knowledge of the forms, noting the special character of beauty. Right? This is one of the two main beneficial elements of love where Plato actually gets to claim that it's a good thing. All right, so it should be fairly straightforward there. So um, totals to 10 points. Um, I'm going to try for you guys get these turned around fairly quickly um, it, because it's uh, concentrated on my uh, on-campus class last time. Uh, I, I, classes, uh, sorry, plural. Um, uh, there are less of you, so I should be able to get your uh, quizzes turned around quicker um, for uh, the next one. So uh, I look forward to hearing your responses, reading your responses, looking at your responses, getting your responses. I look forward to you responding generally. And um, please email me if you have any questions whatsoever with all of this. My email box is this close to empty. So you should get a pretty quick response. Um, so uh, have good days, one for each of you. And um, I hope this video finds you well. Cheers.